Hello again, and welcome back. On this video, we're, we're going to concentrate on work, power, and machine. However, out of these three variables, we will work on work only. So, work is the, this, the force times the distance that is traveled. For example, if you are lifting up an object, if you get an object and you lift it up, okay? So this was the starting position. Let's little, make a little mark over here. This was your starting position. And then you lift it up all the way to there, let's say. This is your ending position right now. So what you have moved is the distance from the black line to the red line from the black line to the red line was your work. So how much distance was it and how heavy or how much force did you use to move that object? Well, that's work. Work is simply the force that you use to lift the object, whatever the object is, in this case it's a triangle, and the distance. So assuming that the distance was, let's call this two meters, okay, two meters, and the force that you used to lift the object was, I'm gonna call this five joules. So you simply multiply the force, which is five joules, times the distance, and that will give you work. Then you have it, the force times the distance gives you work. Now, right now, this object is kept up in the up position. As long as there is no motion, there is no work. For example, I am using five joules of force to keep this object up once it is up. Okay, so it is up on right over here. The triangle is up on that red line and I am keeping it up. But as long as I am, not, I am not moving, that means that this distance that I'm using to move it is zero. Why? Because I am going nowhere. The object is just up. So yes, I am using force to keep the object up, but I am going nowhere. Therefore, if the object is not moving, if the object does not move, although I am doing force, the work is still zero because five times zero is zero. Once I begin to move the object using force, then I am using work again. I repeat, as long as the object is not moving, although I am using force, the distance is still zero because right now it is stationary. Okay, therefore the work is zero. Let's do some sample questions. Sample one says, a child uses 25 newtons of force in order to move a toy car for a distance of five meters. How much work did he use? Okay, so I am looking for work. And anytime that I have an, a question in which I have to use an equation, I like to rewrite the equation. So I rewrite the equation. Okay, let's write the equation right there. Good, so now I have work equals force times distance. Looking for work, how do I know? Because here it says work, I am looking for work. It says right over here, how much work? So I'm looking for this. Do I have force? I don't really care about the story. I just care about my variables. Do I have force? Yes, I have 25 newtons of force. So let's write 25 newtons, 25 newtons. Good, do I have distance? Yes, I do. I have five meters of distance. Okay, so let's do that. I have times five meters of distance. Now, simply, I now have 25 times five, which is my distance. 25 times five, do the math, and that gives you 125. 125, and that will be joules. Therefore, the work that the child used 
to move the toy car for a distance of five meters was 125 joules. That's example one. Let's do another one. Sample two says, a machine ends up with 200 joules of work after a force of 50 newtons is utilized. How much distance did the object move? So it is obvious that the machine is moving an object, but at this point, I don't really care what is moving or what it's doing. All I know is that I have 200 joules of work, I have 50 newtons of force, and I am asked to find the distance. I repeat, I always like to rewrite the equation to see what I'm working with. Okay, so I do have work. Okay, let's move this over here. I do have work, so I have 200 years of work. I do have force, and my force is 50 newtons. I am looking for distance. This is my main concern right now, my distance. I am looking for distance right over here. That's my job to find distance. Okay, so I'm looking for this. I will move the force down. And now I have the work. The work never moves, it's always on top. Now I have the work divided by the force. The work divided by the force gives me the distance. Okay, good job. So let's plug in those numbers and let's see what we get. I have 200 joules of work right over here. It's 200 joules that goes on top. Work is always on top. Okay. Now I am dividing that by 50 newtons because 50 newtons is my force right over here. 200 divided by 50. Do the math. How much would you get? Did you get four? Good. Therefore, you have four meters. If I divide 200 by 50, 200 joules by 50, I end up with four meters. Let's do another sample. Sample three says, after moving for a distance of 10 meters, that's my distance, a big rock needed 500 joules of work to get going. How much force was applied to the rock to move it? Okay. So I have my distance, I have my work, and I repeat, I don't really care much about the story. All I know is that I'm going to apply my equation right over here, and I will solve for what's needed. I do have work. Work is 500 joules. Beautiful. I do have my distance. Distance is 10. I am looking for force. How do I know? Because it's right over here. I'm looking for force. So I'm looking for this variable right here, force. Good. So I will leave force alone and I will move away whatever I don't need. Don't forget, you never move work. Work always stays in the same place. Okay, so now I have work divided by distance. Good. Work over distance gives you force. I am looking for force. How do I know? Because force, I'm looking for force. The question says, what's force? So plug in your values. You have 500 joules of work divided by 10 meters of your distance, plug in and see what you get. We have 500 joules of work divided by 10 meters of distance. Don't forget, I would never move the work. Work is always on top, okay? Work is always on top. So if you divide 500 over 10, what would you end up? So yes, you got it right. The answer is 50. Because if I have 500 over 10, I simply cancel one zero here and one zero there, and I have 50 over one, which is 50 newtons. Okay, so we just did three samples. Let's go over that again. Let's see what we could come up with. Anything new? Let's see. I'm looking for work. Okay, I have three equations here or three words of equation, but I'm this, in this case, I am only looking for work. Sample one says, how much work? I am looking for work. I have the equation, work never moves. So I have my force, which is 25, times my distance, which is, in this case, five. 25 times five gives me 125. That is sample one, looking for work. Sample two, 
in sample two, I am looking for distance right over here, distance. So I don't move the distance. Sorry, I don't move the work. I move the force. Distance stays put in the same place. Why? Because I had first distance times force or force times distance. Now I'm just moving the force away. I'm dividing work over force. Looking for distance. Plug in your values, 200 joules of work divided by 50 newtons gives you four meters. Don't forget that the distance is given in meters. Sample three, how much force? Okay, my question originally had distance times force or force times distance. Now I am looking for force. So I will leave force alone and move distance. Now I have work over distance equals force. Okay, so my work is 500. My distance is 10. In this case, my force is 50 newtons. Okay, of great importance, of great importance, I want you to think of this. Work is always found in joules or J. Okay. My force is always found in newtons or n. And my distance in the case of this equation is found in meters. Okay, so joules equals the newtons times the meters. Therefore, one joule equals newtons times meters. That's work. Work equals force, which is newtons, times distance. I really hope this helps you out.